This movie is designed to give you an introduction to hyperbolas. Let's start with the locus definition of a hyperbola. The hyperbola is the set of all points in a plane where the difference between two fixed points is a constant. This is very similar to the definition of an ellipse that we've already studied. However, an ellipse is the sum of the distances rather than the difference. Here we have the standard equations of a hyperbola. Notice that if the, the hyperbola opens left and right, the x squared term is positive and it comes first. Whereas if the hyperbola opens up and down, the y squared term is the one that's positive and it comes first. Just like an ellipse, values a, b, and c are the lengths that will help us draw a hyperbola. But unlike a hy uh, an ellipse, values, the value a is not the largest. The reference box is used to help draw the hyperbola. It shows the amount of stretch in the x and y direction away from the center. It's determined by a and b, and we'll use these values to help us graph. Another guide that we use to help graph a hyperbola are called asymptotes. These asymptotes are imaginary lines that a function approaches but does not cross. Notice that they go through the corners of the reference box. One has a positive slope and the other a negative slope. The hyperbola comes in close to one asymptote, touches the edge of the reference box, and then exits close to the other asymptote. The asymptotes provide a boundary that helps shape the hyperbola. The center is a point of symmetry that lies at the heart of the hyperbola. The center of our graph happens to be the origin, 0, 0. The center is found at the point hk, which can be read off of the standard form of the equation. Length b is the distance from the center to the edge of the reference box that the hyperbola does not touch. The square of length b is found in the second term of the standard form of the equation. Remember that the definition of a hyperbola is the set of all points in a plane where the difference between two fixed points is a constant. The two fixed points in the definition are called foci. The foci lie on the inside of each branch of the hyperbola. Length c is the distance from the center to one of the foci. It is the longest length on the hyperbola. Perhaps that you can see that length c is also the distance from the center to the corner of the reference box. Vertices are the points that lie on the hyperbola closest to the center. Vertices is plural for the word vertex. We talked about vertex, the word vertex, when we talked about parabolas. Notices, notice that the vertices are located where the hyperbola touches the edge of the reference box. Length A is the distance from the center to each vertex. In the standard form of the equation, A squared is found in the first term. The line segment that connects the two vertices has a special name called the transverse axis. It is an axis of symmetry. The word trans means across. We can remember that the transverse axis is the one the hyperbola cuts across. Since length A is the distance from the center to a vertex, this means that the transverse axis has length 2A. A hyperbola has another axis of symmetry called the conjugate axis. The conjugate axis is perpendicular to the transverse axis and passes through the center, cutting the transverse axis in half. In geometry, we call this bisecting. Remember, a conjugate is a pair. The two items are not identical, but they belong together. Think of a male and a female. We also talked about conjugates when we learned about imaginary numbers. Remember the conjugate of 6 plus i is 6 minus i. Since the distance from the center to the edge of the reference box where the hyperbola does not touch is length b, then the conjugate axis has length 2b. Finally, let's examine the relationships between lengths a, b, and c. We defined length c to be the distance from the center to the focus, but notice that it's also the distance from the center to the corner of the reference box. That's how we've drawn length c here. Now notice that all the lengths are shown together and that they form a right triangle. This means that the Pythagorean theorem applies. Since c is the hypotenuse and the longest length, then the relationship between a, b, and c is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Thanks for watching this short video about hyperbola vocabulary and relationships. If you have any questions, please email me or talk to me in class. Thank you.